I'm here with Zakia Patel. Zakia, how are you? Oh, I am so happy. You're so happy. So happy. So okay. happy. You're moving and you're so happy. <laughs> I had to, I took a second because I was like, there are a lot of emotions, but the overriding one is complete ecstasy. I mean, it's been a lifelong dream to make this move. So apart from the packing, the shutting down accounts, the, you know, the, the, the craziness of moving, the last Has it stuff. hit you? No. Oh, okay. I don't think it will hit me because I think there's so much on the cards right up until we leave. And then you go and then you kind of feel, feel like you're on holiday because it is the best of season and it's Christmas and yeah. New Year's. And so you kind of feel like you've just gone on a long holiday. So I think it might hit me when I am going to my meetings with my managers, new managers and agents and stuff. When Maybe the grind five starts months again. Down no, the line. a few months down the line. I think <laughs> I'll just be like, whoa, how did this happen? <laughs> always wanted to go to Hollywood. As an actor, I think that's the goal, mm -hmm. uh, to play in the biggest entertainment industry in the world, uh, one of them at least. Uh, but I'm not, it's not just Hollywood, yeah, it's Nollywood, Bollywood, Dollywood, I'm going everywhere. <laughs> okay. um, and I think in South Africa, I have done what I can do. I feel like my head is pushed against the ceiling in terms of the sort of stereotypes that are out there for what is perceived as Indian women. And I think that my talents and hard work can exist on an international platform and definitely should. And for myself, I have an amazing career here and I'm so, so, so grateful for what South Africa has given me this amazing platform to do exactly what I love, an amazing, amazing support system. But I want to go play in the biggest entertainment industry in the world. That's awesome. That's a great job. they say is the big bad world out there. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go there without a plan. You can't go there and become a, a waiter. That is not in any shape or form what I'm planning on doing. Being a waiter is not an option. So when I started my green card process, I knew I was going. So I never did the things that people my age are doing. I never settled down, I didn't buy property, I didn't, you know. So what I've been doing for the last three years is every single thing I've done, every role I've taken, every uh, pair of shoes I didn't buy was because my big goal was to go to Los Angeles and to be able to support myself for a number of years without being a waiter and to literally just focus on my career. So the first thing I'm doing when I'm there is meeting with managers and agents because you have to have representation and networking and collaborating in the field. You cannot imagine the collaboration that's going down, especially among the women in Hollywood. I mean, the story has been told mostly from a male perspective, and now it's changing. And I, I want to tell stories by women, for women, about women, who are not just the, the flat or the pretty flower in the picture, but the antagonist, the protagonist, the villain, the, you know, it's a three-dimensional version of how women really are. outrageous for me. I couldn't have asked for more, but it's obviously Murphy's Law just tells you and reminds you, look how good it is over here. You don't want to go. You can't go. And it's felt like that. I mean, I started the year with uh, a movie on the big screen and two series on, on on major platforms, one on Netflix and one on Showmax. And both of them, all of them, all three of them were received so well. And I've been putting together my showreel uh, for the States. And I literally can't choose what part of the work to put in because I believe it is such an, I believe it is the best work I've ever done. I always decide that everything I'm gonna do, whether it's the a lead or or a cameo with two lines, is going to be my magnum opus. So I look at the work I did this year and I'm so proud of it. Not to mention being on Mailer this year, meeting amazing guests mm -hmm. and really, really just it's been a huge celebration of the of, of being a performer. So SABC asked me to come on for their new Eastern Lifestyle show and I spoke to my dad and I said to him I don't want to do it. 
And he said, why? And I said, I don't want to be typecast as the Indian girl because that limits my role, that limits where I go, it limits how people see me in South Africa. And then my dad said, it's experience, it's a new skill, you've never presented in your life. And so for those two reasons, for experience and the skill set, I joined. I could not pronounce any Indian, Hindi, Tamil, Tamil words to save my life. And luckily, our director is an incredible coach. And my gran is a huge lover of Bollywood. And paired with going to Bollywood movies with my granny all the time because we, we both love it. We go gallivanting, we go to movies, sometimes go gambling, don't tell anyone. Um, and, and meeting the people I met during the show. There was, I had no choice. It, 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 it wasn't even like it was something I grew to love. It's something I've always loved, but I've just squashed in myself. I love guzzles. I love music. I love the dancing. Oh, let me let me do a Bollywood dance. I'm, I'm not a fair with the, the classical styles of Bharatanatyam and Kathak that I can now pronounce it. And I, I, I never could. And it's so beautiful to be learning me and my culture and why I love so many things that I've never understood and I've literally tried to squash them down. I used to squ squash and, and straighten my hair into submission and oh no, thank, thank goodness I am my own. It was quite a difficult role to play but such an important one for my career and spiritually. I um, love Candace so much. Whenever people ask about what role I've absolutely loved playing, I say her. And it's for so many reasons. The one reason was I was working with my acting coach on the role and she said, well, what is your take on Candace, on this, this woman? And I said, ah, she's a hoe. <laughs> and she didn't scold me. She wasn't upset, but she reminded me of such a beautiful truth in the entertainment industry, you get to play a character and it's emotionally, psychologically, physically, you get to dress like them. There's another side of it, which is the spiritual side. So there's a communion that happens between you and the character where you get to take some young woman's story, this young mother who has two baby daddies, and you get to tell her story for the woman it's happened to out there. So there is a young woman out there who has fallen in hopelessly in love and had a baby with someone and then been left and then has opened her heart again and the same thing has happened and then she's been left and heartbroken. So that woman is not a hope, that woman is a hope that's romantic and maybe she is chasing and taking drugs to, to quiet and soften the hurt and soften the hurt. So the fact that you get to play these characters like from the spiritual side means that you're giving someone out there catharsis and there are millions of women that this is happening to. So she's so close to my heart because she reminds me of the humanity of an actor and the spirituality of being an actor um, and getting into character. I, 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 people think I'm a wild child but I've always been a straight A student, top of my class, straight A's, always wins, uh, very competitive. Uh, so to play something so far from me, I mean, obviously there's a fun-loving side of her. That was for me to say, but there was a, quite a mean streak towards her mother. Um, you have to dig deep, which mm. is sort of quite the, the ugly part of me, yes. and I think that's what an actor does with acting coaches. You, you, you get rid of the surface-level stuff, and then you... Then you deep dive. <laughs> straight down to me. I'm not a method actor, so I'm not like Meryl Streep or Christian Bale, I'm not a big bad bitch the minute that I'm, you know, that that's my role. I don't go take drugs if that's what I do, I would never do that. Uh, in terms of the drug stuff, I do a lot of research, Google what happens when you take cocaine, uh, your body, do you sweat, your heart rate, like what is the behavior. So it's a lot of research, but in terms of getting out of the character, I don't even feel like I get lost in characters. Um, I don't feel like it, but I think people who know me and who are close to me might feel a little bit differently. I think there might be an undercurrent and a constant energy of that person that, that exists within my life because you're so invested in them. I had ever done in my life. So 
I was a clean slate as an actor. It was a huge learning curve. You know, you get on set and then you're on your marks, and then they're like, now we're shooting a buzz track. And that means they want to get wild sound, the sound around you, so you're not supposed to speak. Okay. And then I'm like shouting, they're like, a buzz track. I was like, oh, what oh, does that mean? I need to be quiet. So it was a huge learning experience. So to eight years later, take eight years of experience and bring it to this young woman, it was, my mind was blown. Uh, not just in terms of the experience, but I guess she is more experienced. Yeah. So eight years later, she's much she older. Yeah. So, so, so we actually grew together, and I have such a soft spot for Aisha. She is, she's very similar to me. I think that's why it was so easy to cast me as a little sister. Okay. I am a little sister. Um, I have that sort of playful relationship with all my guy friends. I have an older sister. Our relationship isn't that playful. Um, it's more sisterly. But it was so beautiful. We were back together in the exact same house, exact same set designer, um, costume. So it, it was so strange being thrown eight years back in the same house, same cutlery, same pots, <laughs> same everything, same cast and crew. Uh, but my heart is so full and, and, and so sentimental for Aisha. To know that she's grown and she's... She, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's so, my heart is so big for her knowing that she is now a young woman and that uh, she'll always be my, my first. Okay. So I'm very particular of her. So that's good. the whole packing thing. Um, I'm taking my accent with me. Um, Are you not going to change it? <laughs> uh, well, I think in terms of the industry, you're going to go act in an American accent, so you yeah. have to be able to switch it on immediately. So I'll definitely work on it and be really good at it. Um, and if can't slips in there, you can't, and you know you have to change certain things, like it's not your surname, it's your last name, because yeah. no one would understand what you're saying. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm sure I'll adopt those sorts of things. But um, I'm not going to stop saying cuck and can't and lost or and putsack. cross and putsack. <laughs> um, so I'm not, yeah, but that's the one thing I'm taking with me. Uh, I'm taking our our very warm hosting attitude. I feel like South Africans are very, very warm. And so we're going to get to South Africa, not South Africa, we're going to get to Los Angeles and we are going to host our way into people's hearts nice. uh, <laughs> and cook them up the most amazing Durban curries. I'm taking my spices, oh, okay. just so you know. Someone told me I could as long as they are vacuum packed. Yes. So I have kilos and kilos. You just of can't spices. take meat. Yes, no meat. <laughs> and um, no peppermint crisps. No how do you know about that? <laughs> All I want is peppermint crisp tart. I'm so you sad about take, that. <laughs> you can eat as much as you can now, though. That seems to be a problem. You need to be Hollywood ready, but you want to eat all the peppermint crisp tart. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do about it? I am importing myself to Hollywood. I am Africa in the true sense of the word. I am culturally and racially mixed, so I am an amalgamation of the people of Africa. I am a mixed masala or a pavement special. I am a colored Indian, colored in, I get it, colored in. Uh, I can't say that joke in America, you can't say that word in America. Uh, Muslim Catholic, colored Indian Muslim Catholic. And uh, I think what I used to do when I was younger, I think growing out of apartheid, uh, we were in Durban, we were at an all-girls private Catholic school, and we were the only girls of color, my sister and I, at a predominantly white school, and it was quite difficult, you know, growing up out of a time where your race was discounted and discredited, so goodness forbid there were samosas in our lunch boxes or, uh, or curry, because then it's like, you smell like a curry, and, it's, oh, and goodness forbid boys would never like it, my sister and I, we would be the go between because no one would ever like a girl of colour. So there was a lot of um, uh, there was a lot of negative sort of attitude towards it, and I never understood it when I was little. I just thought my hair must be straighter. I must never go in the sun because I must be lighter. I wish I had green eyes like my mother. And I used to squash my ethnicity so much, my big bum, my love of gold and dancing around trees. And then I got older and got asked to present Mela and I cannot deny what I am in any shape or form. I am mixed in every shape and form 
and that is my USP, that's my unique selling point, and it is that way, and I'm so grateful for that, and I hope that other little girls and boys who never had role models of mixed people and being ambiguous and never being like myself, I was never black enough, colored enough, Indian enough, uh, and then uh, we were adopted by the white girls at our school, and then we were coconuts, so we never really had a home, you know, and now... Now I stand above and out. I am other. And I'm so glad I'm other. And I hope all the other people who don't know where they belong know that they belong with me and in my heart. So I'm taking that to Hollywood as well for all the others. There. That is so beautiful. That, that Actually, I want to cry right now. <laughs> That's a very powerful message. I love it. Thank you so much. Okay. So we were born Muslim. My dad's Muslim, and uh, he wanted us to be. Or well, I think my granny wanted us to be. But then my mom would take her Muslim daughter to church every single Sunday, um, and then her other Muslim baby to church every Sunday. And so my dad said, you know, he wasn't practicing at the time, and he said, you know what, Jacinta, you love your faith, and you take these little girls with you, and you read them Bible stories, and you pray with them every night. Raise them in your faith. Give them that wealth of knowledge and that spirituality because he, he wasn't practicing at the time. He does practice now. Um, and so we were raised we were raised Catholic. We went to Marsdale and Durban, all girls, private Catholic school. We were raised by the nuns. Um, a lot of sexual anxiety around there. Um, and, but we also have uh, my dad's family. So my granny and my dad who do practice. So we have Ramadan and Eid and we have the culture and the tradition surrounding us. And to be raised with both of those beautiful traditions um, and, a, and an intense love of God, I think there is nothing wrong with celebrating both of those religions. Down where he's always wanted wanted to live his entire life, and he lives right next to a mosque. So every morning he hears the call to prayer, and one day he couldn't oh. sleep and he just woke up at I think half four in the morning and walked to mosque. So he does that every day, and now. he hasn't stopped. Oh, and I think it's so beautiful to see my dad find a form of uh, of practice, spirituality, and meditation uh, that he. So so happy with. Um, he's very very different now to the way he used to be, and I think it has it has grown him. And it's so beautiful to see. It's so beautiful to to understand and to, to meet my dad in this stage of his life. Our family are multicultural, multi, multi spiritual, multi racial. We joke that we're the United Nations. So on my mum's side, we have a German, a, an Australian, an Englishman, uh, a Chinese man, and my dad, an Indian. That so sounds like my husband's family. We are the United Nations. Uh, there range, there's a range of Buddhist to Hinduism, uh, Judaism, Catholicism, Christianity in all shapes and forms. Uh, you name it. My brother-in-law is Kosa. My dad is a man of the of the world and a child of the universe, and he doesn't discriminate or or fear uh, one way of doing things. That is why we are who we are today. Is I think his his beliefs fall very closely into mine. Is I believe and and celebrate God, and I love the way you do it. 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 I will never knock the way anyone chooses mm -hmm. to celebrate their God. And I know Brian's the same way. It's very odd to be, like, okay. have an Iranian accent. Yeah, I, I don't think I've, I've heard that, okay? Uh, okay? So, do you think I'm pretty? You oh. think I'm pretty, right? A lot of girls don't understand that I think I'm pretty even though I have a funny nose. My nose is big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's your favorite. That, yeah, that's what I, 
she's also attached to a character I absolutely love, uh, an Iranian girl who was forced to have a nose job um, by her parents who thought they were doing the best thing for her, and she used to call herself, I am a clown, I have a nose like Gonzo, and um, I love that, so she's very, she's very close to my heart, and that's why I think I love it so much. Okay. I am going to Los Angeles. I am going to love and miss the day. But awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. <laughs>